All right, for our next idea here, we're going to look at using symmetry and how this can help make certain definite integrals easier and faster for you. So for a little brief refresher here, um, we are going to look at even functions. And we know, hopefully, at this stage that f of negative x equals f of x for an even function. And this provides us with symmetry across the y-axis. Okay, we just looked at symmetry not too long ago with all the curve sketching stuff. So a function that is symmetrical across the y-axis like this, an even function, um, the graph might look something like this. Um, I'll draw half of it and then we'll use symmetry to fill in the rest. So, um, I don't know, just draw yourself some little curve, okay? If this is what the function looks like in that first quadrant, then it, since it's assumed to be an even function here, we're going to have symmetry across the y-axis. And so the other half of this function would be a mirror image across the y-axis something like this. I'm trying to get it as close as I can to being symmetrical and actually looking symmetrical. Okay, something like that, you know, give or take art skills. <laughs> All right. So that's what our even functions graph would look like if our function is even, we can actually simplify the integral, definite integral, as long as the uh, interval that we're looking at is symmetrical about the y-axis as well. So if you're looking at the integral from negative a to positive a, where a is just some constant value, that integral of an even function f of x dx is actually just going to be twice the integral from zero to a of f of x dx. Okay, so this is the idea here. And we can see that on a sketch, the sketch right here, if we look at some certain interval, let's say this is negative a, and so this-ish would be positive a. All right, and remember that the integral is referring to the area beneath the curve. And so if we look at what we've got there, we have like two symmetrical halves to this area because of the symmetry of the function. So we can find this total green shaded integral area by just taking two of these areas from zero to A, all right? You could also do um, two of the integrals from negative A to zero of f of x dx. It's just usually working with a positive number is easier in your limits, um, but heck, if a negative number negative a to zero is easier, that is also valid. That's just doubling this area right here. And we still have two symmetrical halves, so that would work. Okay, so that's the idea for an even function. And then for an odd function, remember with those, that's where f of negative x equals negative f of x. And this is a different type of symmetry. This is symmetry about the origin, which is also sometimes called rotational symmetry. Okay, because it looks like you took your graph and like rotated it. Okay, so let's make a little sketch of an odd function. All right. Now, um, odd function should go through the origin. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. 
I'll just draw the first quadrant bit here. Um, I'll draw a similar-ish type of function. Okay, something like this. Let's say that's what it looks like in the first quadrant. And so with rotational symmetry or symmetry about the origin, it's like you took the shape and rotated it around the origin, rotate 180 degrees. And so you'd end up with a symmetrical mirror image right down here. Okay, and again, I'm trying to make that look symmetrical and it doesn't particularly. Okay, I am doing my best. <laughs> okay, sure, that looks fine. <laughs> All right, pretend that's like nice and symmetrical looking. <laughs> okay, now we're going to set up the same type of idea here. If f of x is an odd function and we're trying to take an inter integral from negative a to positive a of f of x dx. Let's check out what that looks like. Um, let's say that this is negative a and so this is positive a. Okay, our net area that we're looking at with this integral is going to be this shaded portion all of this shaded in in green. And remember again, yeah, this is the idea of net area. So remember net areas, anything above the X axis counts as positive. Anything below the X axis counts as negative. So if you see what we have here on our little sketch, we have two symmetrical areas. It's just one of them is positive and then one of them is negative, but they are actually the same size because our function is symmetrical. And so if we have the same positive as negative, they're just going to cancel each other out. And so our integral is actually just going to equal zero. So that is a pretty handy fact to know. If you're dealing with an odd function on a symmetrical interval, negative a to a, your answer for the integral is just going to be zero. It's pretty nice. Okay. Now let's see here a little note about these. Um, sometimes you get more complicated combinations of expressions in your functions. So note here that if you have some expression that's even times another even expression, the result is still going to be even. Kind of like uh, if you had x to the fourth times x squared, both of those are even functions. The result, that would be x to the sixth, is still even. It's going to work that way for more than just polynomials. This is for any pairing of even functions. And then um, same type of thing with an odd function times another odd function. The result is going to be even. So this is almost like you can think of it as kind of plus minus mathematics here. If you think of like even things as positive, odd things as negative. Um, there's maybe some connection uh, in the back of all of this, but that's just kind of how I like to think about it. So like even times odd is going to be odd. All right. And the rules are the same for division. If you had like an even function divided by an odd function, the result would be odd or even divided by even would be even still. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, if there's addition or subtraction going on though, it can be a little harder to tell. So that's where you need to actually plug in negative X and see what's going on with the function here. That's where you need to look for these type of results. Okay, so 
it's kind of the mathematics of oddness and evenness. A um, little fun fact for you guys here. The even or oddness <laughs> of a function is called the function's parity. Okay, so there's a fun vocabulary word for you. Um, if you're determining whether a function is even or odd, you are determining the parity of that function. Okay, so you can, uh, I don't know, impress your friends and family. <laughs> All right, <laughs> with knowing the word parity. Okay, um, so a couple quick examples here of how to use this. Uh, on our first one here, we are taking an integral from negative one to positive one. And that is kind of the tip off there that you might want to look at symmetry of your integrand. Um, the fact that you have a symmetrical interval that you're looking at, negative one to positive one. So maybe we could use one of these even or odd things as a shortcut. Okay, so our function is x to the sixth minus x squared plus one. And we're integrating with respect to x. Okay, so f of x is x to the sixth minus x squared plus one. If you know off the bat whether this is an even function or an odd function, that's great. Skip ahead a few seconds to check your answer. Um, if you don't know right off the bat, go ahead and plug in negative x. All right, take negative x to the sixth minus negative x squared plus one. And when we take that odd, or sorry, the negative value to an even power, negative x to the sixth, that negative is just going to multiply right out. We have negative times negative times negative six times. So that's going to ultimately end up being the same as positive x to the sixth. Same thing with negative x getting squared. The negative will square out. And the plus one is just hanging on the end there. And so you can see that for f of negative x, we actually end up getting f of x exactly back to us. So this is an even function. OK. Now that tells us that we can say this integral from negative 1 to positive 1 is going to be the same as two times the integral from zero to one of the same function because the function is even. All right. And so we can go about taking our antiderivative here, one seventh x to the seventh minus one third x cubed plus x. Got our limits of zero and one. And here, let's plug in our limits. Plugging in 1, that would give us 1 7th minus 1 3rd plus 1. And then plugging in 0, we get, well, 1 7th times 0 minus 1 3rd times 0 plus 0. So just 0. And that's usually where the nice part of these even integrals comes in. Um, the fact that plugging in zero is usually pretty nice for us. Okay, because yeah, zero usually isn't too bad to plug in and evaluate. All right, so otherwise, if you hadn't used the symmetry, you would just be plugging in negative one here. So it's not a huge time savings but it could at least give you a small advantage. All right, so then we've got two times and we'll finish this out here with a common denominator. Okay. 
And we would end up with 2 times 17 over 21 there. And so our answer for this is going to be 34 over 21. Okay. So yeah, using the symmetry of this gave us a small advantage where we got to just plug in zero instead here. If you'd like, you can recompute this integral without using the symmetry, go from negative one to one, you should end up with the exact same answer. All right. Now for our next example here, we're going to integrate from negative pi over four to positive pi over four. And again, there's your tip off to try checking the symmetry of this function, okay? Because if we can use symmetry, it might help us out. We've got a symmetrical interval there. And our function is x cubed cosine x over five plus x to the eighth, integrating with respect to x. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got here. Now, if you are in doubt at all about any of these pieces of the function, you can always plug in negative x and see kind of what's going on here. Is this even, odd, or neither? But here, um, we have some kind of distinct portions of this function. And so I thought we could use our algebra of parity right here and figure out what's going on. Okay, so if you look at the denominator, uh, five plus x to the eighth, that's gonna be an even function. It's pretty similar to the polynomial we just saw. It's all even powers of x, um, adding a constant there, that's even. Okay, x cubed is an odd function, all right? odd power of x, odd function. You can plug in negative x if you're unsure. And how about cosine x? This is the one that people usually forget because <laughs> trig. Okay, um, remember with your trig functions, think about x as being an angle. Okay, so then if you're plugging in negative x, it's that same angle just in the negative direction. So these two angles here, if we're looking at their cosine, that would be adjacent side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. They share an adjacent side. This is the adjacent side of the triangle for both those angles. And so they are gonna have the same cosine value. Okay, so cosine of negative x equals the cosine of x. So cosine x is an even function. Just a little refresher there in case you needed it. All right, so we have an odd function times an even function. Odd times even divided by an even function, okay? odd times even is going to be odd. And then we're dividing odd divided by even. And so we get an odd function overall. Okay, so this here, this is an odd function. <laughs> it is pretty strange looking, isn't it? Huh? All right. There's your dad joke for the day. Okay, so this is an odd function. So our integral from negative pi over four to positive pi over four of x cubed cosine x over five plus x to the eighth dx equals zero. Okay, and that's all there is to it. We are working on a symmetrical interval here with an odd function. And so that's what our property tells us. This integral is just gonna be zero. So we didn't have to substitute. We didn't have to do anything weird with this 
Integrand. This would have been kind of a hard one to work with anyway. Um, trying to find the antiderivative for something like this would have been kind of a mess. So it's really nice when you can use the symmetry, especially for these odd functions here. So super nice result there. We just get an integral result of zero.